about Skirmians. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Also, uh, thank the organizers for this uh, uh, this invitation. So we mentioned earlier that the uh, uh, vortex physics is now starting to influence many other fields of science, and so one of those fields I think uh, it's already uh, influenced it. Will can maybe will continue even uh, further. Is skirming on uh, systems, in particular skirmions in uh, Chiral magnets. So this work was done in collaboration with Cynthia Olson and Shin Zing Lin, who are staff members at Los Alamos. And we had very two uh, very talented uh, graduate students, Dupont John Ray and Sebastian Diaz. So I'm only going to be talking about skirmions in, in chiral magnets, but there's skirmions appear in all sorts of other, other systems. And what is a skirmion? So in the magnetic systems, they're just a, uh, you, you have, say, a ferromagnetic background. And it is a topological uh, a particle-like object that in the center of the skirmion, it points down. And as you move away, there's a canting of the spin that gradually points up. If you look at these spins, uh, they can be uh, you characterize the skirmion by having the spins completely wrap around a sphere. So how do you get these systems? Uh, you get them basically through some kind of chirality, which can be intrinsic in the sample or come from an interface. So here's the uh, spin Hamiltonian for the skirmion. You have the exchange interaction here. Uh, you have an external magnetic field. But then you have this additional term here, which is the uh, DMI interaction, which favors the canting of the spin. And as a function of field, uh, if this is 0, you'll end up with these stripe states. But then as you increase the field, you'll start to get these uh, skirmions, as you see here. So skirmions were uh, predicted a while ago, but at least in the magnetic systems, they weren't discovered until 2009 by the group in Munich. So this is a, a chiral magnet MNSI. This is the, the, the phase diagram where they have a helical canonical paramagnetic phase. And there's something called the A phase here, which had been known about for some time, but no one knew exactly what it was. And this is a neutron scattering experiment. And you see this beautiful six-fold uh, peaks that indicate something that would look like, as we've seen before in, in the vortex systems, a triangular ordering of a lattice. So then this was followed up by various kinds of direct imaging experiments, such as the Lorentz microscopy here. Here you have, again, a nice, uh, beautiful triangular lattice. And here's the phase diagram showing where you get skirmions in this particular kind of system. You can see at low fields you have stripes coexisting with skirmions. Then you have a nice skirmion lattice here. It's somewhat disordered. Then at high fields, it's a ferromagnetic state. So skirmions come in all sorts of sizes. Uh, they can be down from 10 nanometers to 100 nanometers and even much, much bigger. They can also be set into motion with an applied current. So here's a spin polarized current moving through a skirmion. And one thing that uh, uh, happens right away is your, your, uh, uh, the electron uh, uh, spin degrees of freedom will follow the spin texture and get wrapped around as it moves through the skirmion. And this gives rise to a topological Hall effect. And this is important if you want to look at uh, transport measurements. Uh, let me see if I can just get rid of that. Okay. So then, uh, they, they, it's not just metals, but you get them in insulators as well. And again, here's some nice images that look similar to what you know, Tanamar used to show for his vortices. And this also shows that uh, in, this, uh, in these systems, that if you go to a 2D limit or thin films, the region where you have skirmions expands to a much wider range than it does for the, for the bulk systems. And they can be essentially two-dimensional, but in the bulk systems, they're also three-dimensional. So it's like the vortex line in, in, a, in a type two superconductor. And uh, I think uh, Professor White will say a little bit more about those in the next talk. So let's go back to some comparisons to vortices. So there's one, one immediate difference between the vortex systems and the skirmion systems is how do, you, how, how do you detect the motion of them? So in a superconducting system, of course, it's just voltage. But in the skirmion system, that's already a normal metal, so you can't just look at resistance. But because of that topological Hall effect I told you about, that changes when the skirmions are moving. So this is the group in Munich again. They already know there's where the skirmions are from other measurements, and they're just looking at the change of the topological Hall effect. And you, you see the change here, which they interpret as the motion of the skirmions. And from that, they can make a, 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 an effective skirmion velocity versus force curve, which would be similar to a voltage uh, current curve in, in, a, uh, in a superconductor. 
Of course, you can also, the other way to do it is with direct imaging, and this also points out that now skirmians have been made in room temperature systems. There's various groups that have done that, the Argonne group, the FERT group. Uh, uh, Dr. White will talk about his room temperature stuff next. And here's an image of a, a skirmians moving down a chain uh, going forward or backwards, depending on the application of the current. And this brings me to the next thing about the skirmians is a lot of the, the uh, uh, interest is fueled by possible applications. So you could use skirmions as an alternative uh, 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 memory device, so they can be on small scales. You could make logic devices. Uh, the low, they're low dissipation, fairly low dissipation, and they're, they're highly, highly mobile. But in any of these applications that people talk about, you need to understand exactly how they move under a current, how to pin them, how to move them around, and how to manipulate them in some ideal way. The other reason to find skirmions interesting is that they're just, they're another example of a collective phenomenon of, of a many particle system interacting with uh, quench disorder, temperature, external drives, and superficially they look a lot like superconducting vortices or colloidal systems or Wigner crystals or so on, but there's also a number of pronounced differences between these systems. So we already know, from, from vortex physics, we know a lot about how, how to pin vortices and how to control their, their lattice structures, such as creating periodic array of pinning sites. As a function of field, you, have, you can control the symmetry of the vortex lattice, go through these ordered or disordered phases. Uh, also, to make ratchet effects, such as uh, 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 Jose's group. Uh, so one of the questions is, can something like this also be done for skirmions? So we approach this problem two ways. One is with continuum based dynamics where we consider the uh, spin degrees of freedom. And here's our Hamiltonian here and we just integrate the Lando uh, lischitz gilford equation. And this is what you get. You will see, you know, at zero field stripes, but in at finite field you'll get the skirmions. The other way to do the simulation is to consider these just as a particle that has some equation of motion. This has been done uh, many times in superconducting systems, and it will allow us to go to much longer time scales and, and sort of conceptually make the problem a bit easier to solve. So here's just a picture of the skirmions, and you can see right away that one of the big differences between skirmions and other, other the, the systems such as vortices are these spiraling-like motions you see. And this is due to the fact that skirmions have a very strong Magnus force that controls the, uh, their motion. I'll say uh, a bit more about that. So here's a particle-based description of, of a skirmion, or it's essentially what they call modified Thiel equation. You have a damping term, which is similar to the vortex systems. You have the skirmion-skirmion force, which is just repulsive, skirmion pinning force, and the driving force. Uh, this is really the new term, is the Magnus force. Of course, it does, in principle, exist for vortices and superconductors, and also uh, uh, for uh, vortices and uh, liquid helium. However, typically, it's a very small number. In the skirmion case, it's usually at least 1 to 1, but sometimes 10 to 1. So the Magnus uh, term will really be what controls the motion of the skirmions. And to give you an idea, it affects also the pinning and the interaction with other skirmions. So here's an example of an overdamp system. We have a potential minima. What the damping does is aligns the uh, particle velocity with uh, the forces. On the other hand, because it's a cross product, the Magnus term creates a velocity component that will be perpendicular to the direction of forces on it. So here the skirmion is coming in, the force is towards the pinning site, but then the skirmion ends up spinning around uh, the pinning site. Here's a little, an example of this. So this is the overdamp system, and this is a system with strong Agnes force. So here the forces are all ex uh, pointing out, so the particles start to move out. On the other hand, for the skirmion case, they're still damping, uh, so it does move out, but you have this spiraling motion as well. So this Magnus term gives rise to what's called the skirmion hall angle. 
So if you have an applied current, your scrum hand doesn't move just in the direction of the current, it moves at an angle with respect to that. People have seen that. And it, it's generally expected that it's some constant value that has, uh, and its number is determined by the intrinsic value of the sample. So the stronger the, uh, uh, the Magnus term, uh, the larger this angle will be. But what we'll show you is that's not quite true, that, that in fact, the Skirmion Hall angle can change due to the interaction with pinning and drive. So this is some work we did a few years ago. So this is the, the Skirmion velocity versus applied drive for a 2D simulation with random pinning. Where we